Okay, so by now, we've watched video number one, video number two, and video number three. And you should have notes here, here, with solutions here. Notes here, 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 with solutions here and here. Um, now we've got an article and data charts so you can finish your notes and move on to the next part, which is the task. So scrolling down, I put a image here to help you understand the chemistry of ocean acidification. And it does start with this carbon dioxide dissolving into the water and mixing with the water. So CO2 with H2O makes that carbonic acid that uh, takes away the carbonate from the shellfish. And it's that H2CO3. Uh, and it further splits up into bicarbonate ions, which is 1H with CO3 has a negative charge, and then that positive hydrogen. That positive hydrogen is what pH stands for, positive hydrogen. And more positive hydrogens make water more acidic. So the shells that normally take this carbon carbonate, or calcium carbonate, I should say, CA stands for calcium, CO3 is carbonate. Well, the positive hydrogen, just like in that first video, takes the carbonate away from the calcium and it's that carbon that they can't use those shellfish because it's now part of the carbonic acid so if you click on our oysters doomed it'll open up this article and um this the reading I, i'm i'm gonna let you do that on your own uh and take your notes right here for our oysters do. So read that, write down some important facts from it about what ocean acidification is and how do we know it's happening and why it's a problem to oysters and other shellfish and then what solutions do they have there. And then the last bit of notes uh, is from this uh, chart right here. But I also want to show you this because this is something we've always taken the pH of Chimicum Creek to make sure that our fresh water doesn't get too acidic. Now fresh water is always more acidic than ocean water. So for the ocean water to become acidic is really bad because it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be the opposite of acidic which is what is known as alkaline or basic. Uh, so seawater should be around a pH of 9, which is increasing alkalinity. Uh, you also have baking soda, uh, and, and in the normal range of stream pH starts around a 7, but anything less than 7 is acidic, all the way up to very strong battery acid. Um, and, and the opposite is true for alkaline. The more you go towards 14, the stronger the base or alkaline gets. So this chart lets you know like vinegar is a pH of 3. But adult fish will die in a, a pH of between 3 and 4, so 3.5. And, and look, acid rain can be as strong as a 1 all the way up to a 5. And that will affect fish reproduction. So that's why air pollution is bad, because it makes acid rain which can stop uh, fish reproduction. But here's the graphic that's really important that shows the ocean pH over the last 25 million years. And you can see that pH has gone uh, from 8, a little bit over 8, to, ooh, let's see if this is 8.4, uh, it's probably between 8.2 and 8.4, about 8.3. And that's good. That is a good pH for the ocean. But as we get closer to the 2000s, we're finding that the pH has dropped. And 7.6 is getting too close to 7. 7 is neutral. It's, it's neither acidic nor basic, but it's way more acidic than an 8.3. Uh, so even though the ocean's not totally a pure acid, um, it's more acidic than it used to be 
which is affecting the shellfish. And it says here, oceanic pH is dropping now at a rate and to levels not experienced by marine organisms for at least the last 20 million years. So they're not adapting. They, they can't. They don't have the time. Adaptation doesn't work that way. You also have a link here to some wonderful uh, facts about ocean acidification. You can include that uh, facts. Take your best facts and put them in your notes here with the data charts. Um, but yeah, these are uh, great facts. And this is a really great graphic that I had to put in there because when we talk about carbon, we're not talking about the carbon in a tree because that's a lot of carbon and it's, it's solid carbon. You, you can feel it. But carbon dioxide in the air that we're breathing out uh, it takes up a lot more space because it's a gas. So one pound of carbon dioxide gas is about the size of that box right there. That's how much space one pound takes. 